and we will be guys. switching over to live and their shreds. So let's bring them on in. <coughs> okay, and we are live. That doesn't look Facebook. like. Oh, that looks like shred. And there there's shred. <laughs> there he is. Hey, buddy. Okay. We were. We were. You're muted. We can't hear you. <laughs> I said, I have this blue hue going on. I feel like I'm coming from some other planet. <laughs> well, well, when we were just about to go live, so we had a couple seconds to go live and I'm thinking, okay, Shrad isn't on here yet. And I know Michelle sent out the, the link again and it's posted everywhere. It's in the calendar invite. So hopefully it means that Shrad is putting on some pants before he joins us. <laughs> I did not. Okay, please <laughs> don't stand up then. I did say that to Rick that the pants are not uh, mandatory, but please don't stand up if you're <laughs> okay. Look, let's let's be honest, everyone. So, have you ever woken up in the morning? <coughs> I'm assuming you don't have pants on, and you've checked your phone. If you have, then you haven't worn pants. When you okay. so but, technically, but you're not you're not really having a meeting or a conversation with anybody <laughs> else at that point. Enjoy this. <laughs> I not. Hey okay. guys. So there is an echo. Is that echo coming from me? I got rid of it. Sorry about that. Nope, that's fine. I just want to make sure it wasn't mine. I just wanted to have a look at Facebook. No, nope. we got I'll Sarah me. out there. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And I saw um, Janice joined us as well online. Um, so welcome everyone to another edition of Wine and <laughs> Wednesday. Not wine for me tonight. I'm doing vodka. It's been one of those days. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just going to let. Um, Linda in here as well. Throw some Red Bull in there and you have a tea sheets party. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I threw Red Bull in here, I'd be away till tomorrow and that's not really what I want to do. But uh, uh, welcome to another edition of Wine and Whiskey Wednesdays with the Hot Ninjas. And this week it's a special edition. It's Wine, Whiskey and Wage Point Wednesdays. So um, welcome to our special guest, Shrad, the CEO of Wage Point. And Rick is also joining us from WagePoint. So we get to hear the, um, the other perspective as well, <laughs> not just from the, the business owner standpoint, but let's hear how the team members feel about being remote. So it's, I think it's gonna be a, an awesome discussion. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to another edition. Cheers. What a great excuse to drink on a Wednesday night. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so um, thank you very much again, Trad, for joining us tonight. Um, you, for, for those in our audience who don't know who you are, although how they don't, I don't know, but just in case they don't. Um, so WagePoint is a third party payroll, <coughs> um, one of our core app, in our core app stack as well. Um, you've been around since 2012, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we officially launched in, um, in uh, this, sorry, July of 2013. Okay. Um, the years, the months before that were the special months <laughs> okay. when, when we didn't have anything to sell, but we needed to figure out how to get customers anyway. So, okay. Okay. So you've been around for a while. You've been around since 2012. Um, and have you always had a remote team? Yes. Yeah. It's, okay. uh, it's since the beginning and, and hopefully go forward for quite some time. Although we have some unique ways of solving some of the social challenges, which I'd love to share, but yeah. And, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking to pick your brain. So if people have questions, please throw the questions in the comments and we'll try and get to all of them as well. But maybe start out with a little introduction about yourself and, and whatever you'd like to share. Sure, yeah. Um, and, you know, and thank you, obviously, you guys are all awesome. I, I know some of you personally, some of you I've seen the names and, you know, some of you I've seen tickets from. So um for you know for all the times we have uh, we've done right by you thank you but all the times we've done wrong by you i'm sorry and um, some of you have been tackled by shrad i mean me first time i didn't even know who he was and he comes out of nowhere and tackled me it's awesome that's true i extend that courtesy to anyone who exactly. wants exactly it was great just let me know <laughs> um i mean you see i i have you ha i guess something about me is i i'm going to crack some jokes just be prepared um, you cannot really be in payroll without some jokes. Um, you won't survive. It's as simple as that. Uh, you guys are all kind of nodding your head because you all have a different perspective, right? Like you, like we're building the engine, you guys are running the engine. Um, so we both have like, you know, I guess our, 
as as uh, as uh, Juliet said, you know, different perspectives. But anyhow, I really want to thank you guys because I could I can safely say that we are somewhere around the twelve thousand customer mark now. Between uh, yeah, so starting twenty thirteen July to now, um, you know, six years later, we have that's where we're at generally. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting ride. Um, yeah, so the company's been remote for a long time and I'd love to get into it, but I'm really curious about something. So we, you have a Facebook contingent and then you have these wonderful folks here. Is that how it works? Yes. So we have um, a Zoom link that's posted for the people that actually want to join us as on screen and part of the conversation, but some people don't and want to participate either in the, um, in the comments in Facebook or this also... Um, is posted on our, our Facebook page. So it is a Facebook Live. People can watch it live, people can watch it later. And then it's also posted afterwards on our uh, YouTube channel. And there's a link in the YouTube for their YouTube channel in the comments below. So you can watch it there as well. Gotcha. Okay, so I really have to be my best behavior. There's so many people that can, can, <laughs> can come from anywhere. Okay. Yes, um, yes. And then I have a second important question. Okay. What's going on with your cool background there, Linda? I must know. You're muted. <laughs> You're muted, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a picture from uh, Alley. And there's a link in the YouTube. That's not where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in Bali. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it's just a background picture. Okay, I'm gonna have to spruce Everybody up my background. want to be there though. <laughs> uh, you, and Shred, I am in it? Canada. Sorry? <laughs> I am in Canada, buddy. Where that are you right now? Evident. You're always you always think somewhere. That me that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am in Atlanta at the moment, out 40, 40 minutes outside, and I'm clearly got work to do on my background because <laughs> I have a white wall. Um, hopefully I'll try to block it with my beam, but, um, so yeah. So how do you want to do this guys? You want to ask questions? Do you want me to tell you stuff, some stuff? Um, jokes. Like to... tell jokes, dude, I can do that all night. Definitely. We, we've got, we've got some questions. Um, I guess my, my very first question is so I know that you are an accountant by education by history. Sorry, sorry, Julia. Julia, can I interrupt? Because the of course. well, it wouldn't be wine and whiskey Wednesday no, if you I can interrupt. interrupt. Um, <clears throat> did I miss something, or did Shrad do an awesome job of just dodging your first question? My first question was to tell us about himself. Tell about his background and. I, I, did I did I fall asleep? Did I miss? No, something? no, no, no. I I'm not. Uh, I mean, you know, that's a very big question. So I just wanted to get some more specificity <laughs> around. That. Okay. Because I could tell you all kinds of things outside of the jokes. Okay. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. He's trying to get around it again. <laughs> yeah. I, no, no, not at all. Um, so, so what we really need is we need Lena on here as well to kind of yeah. just kind of no. Go on, it, Lena. She'll keep it all straight and narrow. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Um, I hope I even brought some snacks. Yeah. Um, Perfect. So, okay, so, so we know you're an accountant by education, by background. What made you decide, first of all, to get into creating a payroll company? Why payroll? Um, so, no, that's a good question. So I was sort of, I grew up in Dubai in the Middle East. Um, I came to Canada when I was 19 and I didn't know a single person in Canada, like literally nobody. The first person I ever knew was the cab driver who gave me a ride to my dorm. <laughs> um, and so I guess I've always been very resourceful, very hustle. And I also, I, I believe in some stuff very deeply, like I believe in building communities. Um, so I, I was always going to be an entrepreneur. That's as simple as that. It was just a matter of when, it wasn't a matter of if. So if someone said to me, and I'm not really attached to a product per se, I am attached to solving a problem. That's what I like. And sometimes the more complex it is, the more interesting it is. So to me, it's something that's a very complex problem is how people are treated inside of companies, because it's such a big, um, it's such a big part of your life, right? Like, I mean, all of us, you guys are mostly entrepreneurs yourself, so you don't necessarily have this problem. But if you go to a company and everything's kind of like, you know, stiff and like, nobody's drinking whiskey on Wednesday, you kind of like, what's the point of life, right? And so I've always wanted to build the kind of company that I would work at. Um, and that would be, it'd have, it would have the ability, um, it would have the feeling that every single person that came in contact with our entire community would feel like friends. 
like you guys right now, right? So we all feel like friends, even though we all sort of work with each other. And sometimes you kind of get annoyed with us. And sometimes we, you know, we do the, the right things by you, right? So despite all of those things, we can still feel that, that camaraderie and that friendship. And that is what I wanted to build at a company level and then at a customer level. So just to, just to dial it back for a second. So yes, I, I, did, I did go to, like I said, I go, went to school here in, um, not here because I'm in the US, but in Canada <laughs> where, and I kind of pointed north <laughs> for those who didn't know. Um, so I went to school at, in the, at the University of New Brunswick. And um, at that time, um, we had like a very short amount of time in which to go from, like, so I was an international student. So I had like three months to go from writing my last exam to finding a job. It's three months and then you're done. You have to get, you kicked out of the country. So hustle has been in my genes for some time uh, for, for the reason that I had no choice, right? Um, and I, because I knew I was always going to be an entrepreneur, I knew that I would figure out marketing. And like, if I had to say, if I was any type of entrepreneur, I, any type of CEO, I'd say I was a marketing CEO because I'm probably the most comfortable in my element there. But I knew, so when I was in, in Dubai, I went to, um, there was just this accountant had embezzled $300,000 from the owner of the company where I was working. And because I knew I was always going to be an entrepreneur, when that happened, I was like, I should really learn that stuff. <laughs> one day that could be me getting, you know, on the short end of the stick there. Okay. Uh, it never occurred to me that I could do the embezzling, by the way. So it was always, I was always the one going to be the one embezzled. Um, and so, so I decided to start um, studying, I went to school to study accounting and finance. And so I am totally not built for this, by the way. Like I was that, I was that like a guy that totally didn't fit in the accounting class. Like I would pull down charts and go like, thus showing size does matter. And then, <laughs> and then they would be like, what, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Why isn't he in marketing? Right. So the point I'm trying to make is that even though I was uh, very passionate about, you know, entrepreneurship, I knew I had to learn stuff and that's how I became uh, an accountant or that's how I learned accounting. I'm not an accountant. I definitely learned accounting. Um, and I had, I got my CMA. Um, and then after I started the business, I wrote to the CMA saying, I feel like I'm learning everything I need to learn from this. I don't feel like I need to come to the PDA or the professional development courses, at least some of them, like give me some credit. And they said, no. <laughs> and I said, delete, you guys are captain. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's my journey from, you know, basically that's my association with accounting to some okay. extent. Okay, so why payroll? Why did you start a payroll company? That's a really good question. I ask myself that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so there's a couple of reasons. One, I could see that there was a, there was a niche that we could get into. Two, um, I really thought that the small business market was underserved. Um, but honestly, if I had to give you the true, true answer just between you and all of us, <laughs> yeah. um, it's because I, I love the idea of building a business with friends and payroll just happened to be the business I picked. Okay. Fair so enough. it's, it's really a matter of what I want to do with my life and how I wanted to treat people and how I wanted to be treated in return. And payroll just happened to fit that because it had a good size market. Just, I could sense that there was like a way in. And I just wanted to build something that people could, could feel warm about, even though it's payroll, you know, as much as warm as you can feel about payroll. I just wanted to give that sense of feeling about something that's kind of a difficult topic for a lot of people. Okay, excellent. Um, so, so just one comment is you've obviously been in the US more than you've been in Canada because it's niche, not niche. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> again depending on where you are though right um okay so canadians win that you're you're right <laughs> you started 2012 2013 and you've been remote since the beginning so remote wasn't a thing in 2012 and 13 so why did you decide to go and build a remote team back then now it's all fashionable and yeah. everybody's talking about it but yeah. back then you would have been one of the pioneers doing it yeah, that's a good good question. Um, I don't think I even thought about it. I was my thought was where are the where can I find good people, and how do I how do I bring those good people into the fray? 
So because culture is such a big deal, for example, even today, I always have a culture interview with every prospect that comes to the door. And what that means is that I spend time, I don't talk about what we do and I don't talk about what they need to do in the company because that's not as important as understanding who we are and whether or not they fit with who we are. Not in a Stepford wife type way, okay? So I don't want like robots, like everyone acting the same. That's not the point here. It's about understanding that we're trying to build an environment full of humans and accepting that the realism that comes from being a human, which is the good and the bad, is something that we all accept and understand. So, and again, these are very high level philosophical conversations. And you see, I constantly bring it back to that because the philosophy with which, with, by which we run the business and we think about the business, it's all tied into this. And that's why everything you guys sense from us as a collective enterprise, um, like, I don't know if this gentleman is here or not, but we had a partner a few, a few weeks ago that sent us the funniest note ever. Um, he's in British Columbia, I believe. So I, I don't know if he's, he's here or he's still working, unfortunately. But um, he said, every, every, so when I first started working with you guys, I was a bit grumpy. And every interaction I've had with your team, every single person has been really kind. And now I must defeat your kindness by becoming even more kind. So <laughs> it's sort of like this feeling of, and I, and I don't know if everyone in this group has ever felt this from us, but that is what we feel when we are putting our <laughs> world there. Um, so that's why I, I go back to the idea of philosophy. So why did we start the company at that time? Because we were looking for a specific type of person. It's not even the talent. It's a specific type of person uh, that values certain things and they could be anywhere. They, they, they're here with you guys right now. So that is why we did remote. It's to find the right people all the time and never to be constrained by geography in that. Okay. So, so that leads into a great question. How do you, so can you walk us through what a culture interview looks like? Yeah. Because I've not heard that terminology before. And that's also right now a big buzzword out there is, you know, you hire for fit and you train for skill. But when you come down to it, I mean, you still need some base level skills from the people that you're hiring to work in a particular position. Yeah. Um, but how do you identify whether or not they are the right fit or not? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the skills are a gimme, right? You kind of have to know your thing. And uh, the reality is that we do, we have very strict probation three months. We have a very, very strict three month probation. We do not we, we tell people when they, if they're gonna leave another job to come and work with us, we tell them just be mindful that this is not like other companies, we will fire you <laughs> if this doesn't work. Um, and the reason for that is because they need to know that they, not only do they need to bring their A game, but at those three months we're testing for skill also and the rest of the stuff that we could, there's no way in, a, in an interview you can tell that someone can do a job, right? You don't know. All you can tell is whether or not they can kind of, if they are reasonable, they're logical, you know, that's it. So I'll tell you a couple of things that I do. I never interview by webcam or in, in person even for the most part. I almost always, I always do it on the phone. And one of the reasons I do that is because I don't want any biases. I don't want to look at anything that could or any stimuli that could actually create uh, a bias essentially. Um, the other thing is the interview starts when they've submitted something, right? So if their grammar is shitty, Oh, wait, I can say shitty, right? I mean, we're drinking whiskey. So <laughs> it's anyway. Yeah. Well, what else can I say? Um, <laughs> um, so, so my point is that it starts from that moment on when they've actually submitted something and I'm actually reading their, if there's a punctuation missing, if there's a, and I know this sounds really nitpicky, but it's really that intense. The screening process with us is that intense. The other thing is very rarely do we do open calls for, for, for uh, jobs. We, it's going to sound crazy because I'm very busy now and this is totally not scalable, but I actually reach out to people on LinkedIn for the most part, like probably half the people in here um, in WagePoint have come from LinkedIn or ADP, mostly ADP. Okay. Um, you, you found me on Twitter, Shrad. Dude, you're everywhere. You used like to follow me around and I'd be like, who is this guy anyways? I didn't even know who you were. And then I finally figured it out. And that's when we met in Toronto two years ago. It was awesome. I just wanted the hug and then you gave it yeah. to me. Now I can't have enough of it. Okay, but while we're on that topic, I understand no hug this year because you're not coming. Lena is coming. That's cool. She's Do Rick a, and I have to have a man hug like we did in Edmonton? 
Yeah. Because we will yeah. do it anyways. Just what throw Lena in there and you can have like a man sandwich hug, okay. whatever. Like <laughs> Perfect. Sorry to interrupt. I just had to throw that. No, no, it's all good. Um, so, so yeah, so we, so one of the things that you, you sort of, and again, I, I don't want to belabor this point, but when like we had a, we had a wage stock, um, yes, wage stock uh, last week in Halifax, which basically had 25 wage pointers coming from all over uh, Canada and there were there were people already resident in Halifax. So we had this last week to bring some people together. And uh, one of the things that kept coming up over and over again is how so many like-minded people are in the same place. Um, they were so happy and excited. They were jumping on top of each other. I was, I was a bit worried for the furniture. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is that I tend to be the common, uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm screening for commonality across each individual. So when they come together, they feel like an organism. And I know that's a weird word, especially when we're drinking whiskey, but they feel like an entity almost um, and a collective entity with a collective consciousness. And that's kind of the way the, the, the community gets built. If, if I'm making any sense, I don't know if anyone has questions at this point, but that's kind of how it works. Sense. Okay, so I have two questions and then I'll open it up for anyone else that has questions. One is, do you do all the hiring yourself then? You don't have an HR team. It's you personally that is doing all the hiring? Um, so we do hire sometimes through Robert Half or like stuff like that. Uh, but so we hire a lot of referrals. Like, you know, there's people clamoring to get out of ADP. So that <laughs> that helps. Like, it's sort of like the zombie apocalypse, you know, like, it was like, 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 you know, and so we do have usually a really good pipeline of CS people. And so we get to be very picky about that. Okay. Um, and they're so great. Like, I mean, they're so, they're so smart and they're so underutilized. And I'm not, you know, ADP is a massive company. It's got years of history. So I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to sort of say anything bad about them, but I will say that their culture is exactly what we need to vote from them uh, happily. So that's so so that's one source uh, and then if you're looking for a specific type like for example our marketing roles we found all of them through linkedin based on a, a, a simple boolean search that i've been using forever um so yeah so that's that's generally how we do it okay so you're so you're hiring everyone and then the second question i have is are you willing to outsource your hiring services so that you can hire for people like us <laughs> <laughs> Now, well, you know, I am a little bit busy these days. Um, <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. No, no, I understand. I mean, I I get it though. I, I know how hard it is. It's it so is. difficult. Yeah. Um, but that culture interview that I, I talk about, almost everything I do is talk about who we are as 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 a group. Um, I tell them, I ask them if that this is something that they actually want to join. If this is something they can celebrate, and more importantly, I tell them the culture is not my problem. Because at some point I'm outside of that, that situation. I'm not talking to these people every day, right? So they need to become guardians or they need to safeguard the culture on their own. And that's something else that has happened just by, like, if you guys think about it, okay? Just, just really, really think about this. When you join any company, does anyone ever tell you how to think or how to behave with each other? Like, if you think about what I'm saying, you go to school and people teach you how to socialize with each other. At home, your parents teach you how to do it. In a company, you're just dropped. You're just like, good luck. You'll all figure it out. I'm sure of it. What if you actually set some of those rules up, right? You said, look, I'm going to try to take away some of the anxiety that plagues people. Um, you know, the, the stuff that worries them, like, is she talking about me? Is he saying something bad? All that other stuff. What if you said that stuff is not cool here? You can actually tell the people who are bothering you and we give you ways to do that. What if you did those things instead? You actually help people think about how to interact with each other. How does that change the way that you all interact? Because you now have a rule book, right? Yeah. Something, some sort of playbook. Um, so that is the culture interview. It's really about talking about what, how do you have, when you come in here, how should you perceive this and how should you behave? And what are the, the things that, I always say that my job is to create the boundaries of culture, the things that you shouldn't do. So don't be racist, don't be sexist, don't be a dick. Simple. Okay. Right? Outside of that, you should be you because that's that's the best version of you already. You don't have to try and manufacture something from somewhere else. You just be you. And that simple thing where people can just be themselves, I swear to God, this is literally what people do. They go, they just, just relax. And that is what creates the most productivity in the company. 
Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Jonathan, you had a question. Yeah, um, it was about evaluating the grammar, like from interaction number one. And I, I've heard Juliet and Steve say like from interaction number one, and that's really helped us to some degree. But I am finding that I have no idea why, but my best staff members, English is not their first language. And I always test to make sure they're, they, they can communicate well, but I'm not so nitpicky on that. I'm just wondering, first of all, nice to see you again, Sean. Uh, you. <laughs> how, like how, how hard are you on those things? And like, what would be a deal breaker versus what would, uh, you know, what would be acceptable? Like if you're chatting with somebody on uh, LinkedIn, for instance, and they were to use an acronym or something like that, would that be a deal breaker for you? And why or why not? No, that wouldn't be a deal breaker. Um, and actually we've, we've hired people with less than adequate English or grammar skills as well. The way that we supplant that is we use something called Grammarly um, and we just make sure everyone has Grammarly turned on so that when they're sending emails or, or tickets or whatever, that they have something to use to, to run it through. Um, I find the same thing. Sometimes like really emotive people are not very good at, at writing or even sometimes really hardworking people are not really good at writing. I think the problem happens when it's like something like payroll. When people think if you can't get spelling right, how can you get my payroll right? Right? That's part of the issue that you're, you're combating that perception. And I don't know that you would have a much different perception as accountants because accountants are what? Detailed, right? That's the, that's the whole thing. So how do you, if, if you have one grammatical error, it's one thing, but if it's consistent, it's something else. And I think if someone is not willing to work on it, that's when it's a problem. It's not a problem inherently. It's just whether or not they're willing to work on it. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Uh, can I ask another question? Um, okay. I'm sure I'm here all night. No, no. Awesome. The idea of the culture interview, I love that idea. Um, definitely something that I'm going to start doing, uh, especially right at the beginning, because it will weed out anybody who is you know, just talking. How do you tell if somebody's telling you what you want to hear versus being genuine? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I don't. Um, I, I don't pretend to, I guess. I, I think, so there are usually stories that people tell you about themselves. Oh, I never ask what strengths and weakness. I don't, I don't know the last time I've had a regular interview. Um, I'm a regular interview about strengths and weaknesses and stuff. I don't even remember to reference the checks. Because I'm like, what, what are they going to do? They're going to get me their best friends, right? I mean, why, why would I do that? Um, and, and I'm also, I think I'm okay to be wrong. I think that's the thing. Like, I don't have to be right about every single person. I happen to be right about many people, but I'm also wrong about them. Um, so to answer your question, I, we, we talk through stories. So I don't, we don't have a conversation about the job and we, I mean, we may have something to do with the job, but it may, it's mostly about like, just, Hey, how you doing? Like, so tell me what to do this weekend. What do you like? You know, how do you like to, what do you, it's really about learning about them as a person and in their stories, you can start to see whether or not there are things that you automatically sort of like, right? So some people will tell you about their kids and how important it is that they all get A's in school. And so now you can sort of kind of have a sense that these people are a bit more, you know, a little bit more meticulous about raising their children. That's something, right? So you get like clues from things that you, but it all happens if you can, if you don't have a script, it does not happen if you have a script. And that's part of the, the, it's not, I don't know if this is a copy paste kind of thing. I think it's more of a, you just listen with yourself, like, you know, fully with intent and somewhere in the stories, you will pick up things about, about them. And then the three months probation is where you check that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have been advised by my HR consultant person that there are certain questions I should not ask. Uh, are you married? Do you have children? Things like that. But those kind of things could be important to a cultural fit. Um, do you have prompts that you use to kind of get the information you want? And what kind of information are you looking for besides, you know, if what they did on the weekend kind of thing? John, I, I'm not looking for anything. That's part of what I'm saying. It's, it's open format. It's them and me talking as people. It's not them and me talking as, the, you know, like I, I can't. So one of our employees, um, she came to her, to the interview. Where, this was one of the times I did a personal, a physical interview. And uh, it was at a Tim Hortons or something or Panera in Vaughn. 
and uh, as she brought a kid with her and I said oh no problem like let her stay. let her hang out here and her kid is super cute so she's you know we had to try not be distracted by her and uh, and she basically she was like this okay yes no maybe and I was like okay let me just ask you something are you nervous and she says yeah and I said, listen, this is for you to fuck up. Okay, like, I mean, I, you have this job, so don't worry about it. And I, there's another example of the time when she just like, you know, someone just, just relax and they just become themselves. So the idea is not to have a format. It's to just talk to them as somebody else that is, you know what you want, right? You know the kind of person you are. Don't you know what you want, who you want to hang out with in your life? You kind of already have a sense of that, right? You're trying to see whether those are the people you want to hang out with. That's pretty much it. So it's about the non-format. And I know as accountants, this may be hard because you guys love to have processes and like, you know, everything feels should fit correctly, but it's, but you're still people. So just be a person with another person and it actually works incredibly well because they don't feel pressurized. They can tell you anything, um, you know, they, 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 can, they can be honest, but I do have a format in the sense that I do talk about what our culture is like. I always say that, Listen, we're just on the right side of a little crazy, but in a good way, right? So one of the quotes from our, our team from an anonymous survey was, um, so it was, what do you like about working on, at WagePoint or something? Or why do you like working at WagePoint? And someone says, uh, because I've, I've, always, I've kind of always dreamt about a planet of crazy everything, and I partly see my dream coming true, <laughs> right? So this is exactly what I'm saying. Like you want people to feel like there's some, they can just, they can be themselves. And the only way for you to do that is by starting on that note, by just letting them be. Um, and I know I totally sound like some sort of, you know, like, I don't know, it's visionary. totally not business conversation, visionary. but this you, is you what You sound they, like a visionary. Yeah, maybe that's the own word for it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we've heard from Shrad. So now let's hear from Rick who is on the team side of WagePoint. And yes, we know. So Shrad, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me? All right, so this might be my last day working here. I don't know. <laughs> but from your perspective, Can you guys hear me? How, is it, how is it interacting with the rest of your team who are not located with you? Um, well, first, can everyone hear me okay? Somewhat. Some, somewhat okay. Right. And you can, you know, you know, you can officially stop saying that this is only me who's having trouble with you. It's everyone here. <laughs> All right. How about this? Can everyone hear me a bit oh, better? That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. All right. Great. It's the headset. Um. You know, I, I was I was worried about this question coming up because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to handle it. How I was going to answer it. Um, what I'll start with is this. I, I was hired here about four and a half years ago, and I'm one of those people that Shrad poached from ADP, and he's, he's not wrong. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I, I head up our sales channel, and I have to tell you the culture um, that I was coming from, especially around sales, was not one that, that cultivated uh, a, a sense of camaraderie. I can say this. I think out of the first two calls I had with Strad, one of them I remember reaching almost three hours. So one call was almost three hours with this man. And when I was off the phone, all I could think was, oh my God, this is not a place that I, I would ever feel like I have to work. This is a spot that I need to work at. So as far as the culture fit that he's speaking to, that's what it does to you after talking and after having this, uh, you know, culture interview, that's the way you start to feel. Um, and, and furthermore, when you're dealing with new people that are being brought into the organization, um, he's right. These are people that you can instantly find uh, a level of camaraderie with something that you have in common with. It's, it's an effortless, uh, an effort, effortless process. Um, and, and again, we're all kind of, bounds by this desire to for the fact that we want to be there that that we're we're we, we really feel like we're connected and uh 
have, I, you know, I'm, I'm almost at a loss for words because it's, it's, there's so many things that I want to be able to say, especially about Shrad and the opportunities that he's giving, uh, given me and everyone else at Wagepoint. Um, so shy of making any jokes, I, I you know, I, I really want to say that what he's saying right now about finding the right people is it, it goes so much deeper than, than what he's making it sound like right now. And, uh, and honestly, I mean, I, this, this is a great, great gig. Uh, it, I, I want to work and when I'm not working, I, I miss it. Um, that's, that's, that's what this, that's what this experience does. So I'll stop circling and saying the same things a bunch of times. I'll let you go back to it. That's, yeah. <laughs> but, that's but my take. I think, I think he brings up a very, very important point. The remote team works because that works, right? Like when people can talk to each other without fear of in, uh, incrimination or fear of uh, disappointment or whatever it is, when they can really be real with each other, remote works, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too that I've always thought about is like, imagine now if these guys saw me every day, Okay, and I'm espousing all this stuff every day. What happens today is when they see me, they hug me. Imagine if they saw me every day, they wouldn't hug me. They may not <laughs> even shake my hand, right? So there's a difference in the way that like the absence makes your heart grow fonder thing. That's totally true. These guys are all, everyone's connected. So, so the, the culture stuff and the, the level of getting together and understand, oh, that's the perfect word, understanding each other. That is what makes the remote work and understanding what to expect from each other. All the tools, all the processes, all that other stuff, they all help. But without that, you got nothing. Imagine if I, I talk to you guys right now and you ask me a question, I, I barely say anything. How's that gonna help you guys understand me? You, it won't, right? That is why this is such an important thing, like finding the right people. And I know when we say right people, we mean all kinds of things, but setting the stage for how they all have to interact with each other, that's the most critical part. Of, of running a remote team or any team. It just so happens in a remote team, it's, it's more important. Okay, excellent. So Rick, a great testament to the environment that Shrad has, has attempted to create and obviously has succeeded in, in being able to create. So I guess, uh, uh, is there, are there any questions? I'm ask, asking all the questions here because I mean, I has been thinking about questions for the last week, so. Um, I I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me. Hi. So I kind of came in a bit late. So, but I have a remote team and we're just starting uh, probably been about a year. And one of the things I'm struggling at, and maybe it'll go away once we reach a critical mass is managing everyone. Um, just trying to keep everything, all the balls in the air and keeping everything together when we don't actually meet in the same space, because we're all geographically separated. Because the other problem that I have is everybody that works with me is an accountant. And so, except for me, they're all pretty quiet. Yes. So I'm really interested to know how you're able to bring that out for, for people that work with you. Um, do you guys use Slack? Uh, we use Teams. Okay, Microsoft? Okay. Yeah, yes. and um, we live on it. We're like on it all, like all day. So let me ask you something. If someone posts something on like, I don't know, I assume a water cooler or whatever, like, do they ever post like some really funny stuff? Maybe a bit racy, but a little dumb. Do they ever do stuff like that? No, no. Do you ever do that? I do. We do. We try to keep myself and my partner. We try to keep it a bit light, but um, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of because I don't know. Maybe it's because it's accounting. The work isn't fun. I I'm not sure, but but I mean payroll. It's kind of the same thing. You know, payroll. You know, the, it sounds like the company's good, but payroll isn't much more exciting than accounting, right? Yes, I, in fact, I, I, let me show you what our let me show you what our our Slack channel looks like. Hold okay, on I'd love to see that. Okay, so this is a Slack. Uh, can you guys see? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'll show you what our. I, I don't know how much of this is not safe for work, so I'm warning you guys. <laughs> um, so this, of course, they're talking about this stupid Christmas music, which I think is way too early to listen to, but that's a different problem. Um, sorry, I'm just going to scroll up to this place. This is what makes everyone very happy. Dad jokes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but what, what's interesting, <laughs> what's interesting is that there's almost no restriction on what you can and cannot say on this. And uh, that okay. is actually why I said that, you know, one thing that you could, and of course this keeps going, okay? Like there's more dad jokes, there's all kinds of stuff. 
I, I don't even want to, I don't want to show you guys because I'm, at some point you will be judging us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, so did you start it or did the staff start it? How did this get started? I asked the question, why are you not posting funny stuff? I'm bored, put something funny. Um, <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. Like so much of this is just asking the question. So, Hey, what's going on? Like, because they get, they all getting memes and funny stuff, or they all want to say something. They all get, they're getting it from somewhere. Right. So how do you actually begin that? You just have to ask the question, like, what can I do to make you a bit more interesting for me? <laughs> interesting. No, I'm interesting just for you. It. Yeah. I'm just so messing I should, with I you should tell my staff, you need to amuse me more. <laughs> Exactly. But also, okay, all jokes aside, you have to give them permission to do something. So you have to let do it and then see that there's no, there's no consequence. Right. Do a little bit more. See, there's no consequence. Well, we don't, we don't track time. So there would be no consequence as long as they still get what they need to get done. So exactly. I can see that that could fit into how we work. Um, it's a very interesting concept. Thank you very much. I would never have thought of that. Yeah, but honestly, like I would, I would absolutely have a conversation with them. And just go like, look, how do we make this workplace more fun? How do we, how do we talk to each other? Can you tell me how we should talk to each other? This is what I meant when I say sometimes just asking people stuff is so much easier than guessing. <laughs> right? Very true. Very true. So, um, you just have to like let down your own, like you have to be willing to be wrong, fail, be vulnerable, all those things. And then somehow people just start, seem to, they feel like they're telling you how to make things more interesting. And then suddenly you have the answer. Okay, well, I will think about that. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions either from the people watching or the panel since um, I'm, I've been kind of hogging all the questions before I jump in again? No, nope. okay. So um, two questions I have for you. One is one thing that I noticed when Rick was talking was he talked about um, you know, being thank thankful for being part of the wage point organization. But one of the things as business owners, what we're always looking for is we're looking, you know, we have this vision in our head of what we want our businesses to look like and we want to build it, but we need people on our team who want to build it with us, that it isn't us, you know, pulling them, you know, by the hair and saying, you know, come with me. It's let's all move towards this together. And I, I, I may be mistaken, but I don't think I am, that I felt that when Rick was talking about the organization, that he is as, as invested in yeah. wage point becoming a success as you and Lena are. So does that come back to culture or is that something else that you're doing? Uh, like imagine if you built the kind of place where you could just be yourself, right? And, I, and again, the reason this is important is because if you like, this is how I like to think of it. We're all like friends building a payroll software company. If we were, we would all be friends getting stuck in the Andes and making decisions on who needs to eat who, right? So <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm saying, <laughs> Brad's dying over there. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because the fact that we're all friends is still true no matter what the situation is. And it's that, and I, I'm not saying like, this is not unconditional friendship. This isn't the kind of friendship where, you know, you can sit and eat potato chips on my couch all day and like do nothing and that's supposed to be friends. It's not like that. It's a different, it's a construct of friendship inside of this environment, inside of a company environment. And ultimately the reason that, I, and I'm totally speaking for you, Rick, so you're more than welcome to jump in here. But the reason that he feels like that is because he doesn't feel like he's being an, a natural version of himself. He feels like he's being himself and with a specific goal in mind. So the fact that he does not have to pretend to be someone else and he doesn't have to, uh, and he has a specific goal in mind for what he wants to achieve in his own life, as well as the company, they all align with each other. And that's what creates that, that sense. Rick, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Yes, okay. boss. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what, I, that's what I call him most of the time, so. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Um, any other Let's, questions? Julie, I have a question, Julia. So, uh, Shad, you hire based on culture and you just kind of, I obviously get a gut sense of, yeah, this is going to work. So then what do you do about filling in the gaps? You've got a good person, but crap, they can't even do this basic thing. 
or was that something that you just said there's a bar that before that they don't even get an interview? Uh, yes, that's true. I mean, they have to have yeah. the skills. Yeah, no, you're right. So that's why I said the skills are a gimme. You, you, if they don't have the skills, they, they're in trouble. I mean, there's no, no matter how much we want to be friends with them, we won't be. So um, if you go back to your app, though, or something that they need to use, if it's the first time they've ever used it and they kind of go, wow, I don't know where the on button is. But then once you give them the on button, they're great. So how do you teach or train to, yeah. you know, get over those initial hurdles? That's a really good question. And actually, a lot of people inside the company, Rick included, actually, Rick joined us in sales as a rep. Now he runs a team that has, I think, five or six people. Um, we are all about diamonds in the rough, looking for people who are, who, if you just brush them off a little bit, they'll start to shine, right? Um, and you give them some tools and some support. So to answer your specific question, it's not the fact that they've learned something, it's the willingness to learn. Like there are people who will, if they're, they're not very good, they'll give it everything they've got to get to that next level, right? They'll be like, they'll be up the ones up all night. They'll be the ones installing things on their software, their computer, like Grammarly to like figure it out. It's that desire to get better that we're looking for. It's not necessarily the start and the finish line. Now we're looking for progress, obviously, right? So this is why that three month probation thing is such a big deal. And this is why it's such like, whatever happens if someone does not, does not, it does not have the requisite skill set or the requisite culture in those three months, however hard it is. And sometimes it's very hard because it's very close. We are almost militant about it. Um, and so setting the expectation that those three months are a real thing and don't, don't think it's something that's simple or that we're just going to like let go. And we check in with them too in the three months and we tell them like, you're very close, but there is a problem here. So it shouldn't be a surprise when somebody lets, gets let go. Um, but as warm and fuzzy as we are, there's also that, you know, there has to be a certain amount of, of deliberate action if someone isn't making the cut. And how you know the difference between the two is how committed they are to getting better. That's really what we're looking for. Does, does that make sense, Allison? Yeah, it, it does. I just, um, I'm thinking actually I had to jump into ADP workforce now last fall and go through the tax T4 cycle with no knowledge. So on the one hand, I'm hearing about a lot of people jumping ship, but honestly, those people just, I learned everything I knew by talking to the ADP consultants. So that was an example where I didn't know, I called, I found a problem. It was gonna be really bad if someone didn't pick up the ball and go. So that's kind of, I mean, when, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you're saying that, okay, I didn't know anything, but I had a problem to solve. And so I figured out how to solve it. And honestly, ADP worked hard to help me, right? Yeah. So as long as and I had questions, then, uh, then they were willing to really walk farther. I've just come into a wage point payroll. So I'm really actually quite excited to, have, you know, I listened to uh, Rick's presentation earlier today. And that was great. And so it's really a different experience. And for small businesses, it's so much easier than Workforce Now. Yeah, it's absolutely. So much ADP, more manageable. ADP system isn't really made for small businesses, right? That's actually the, no niche, kidding. You know, the niche, the niche that I was talking about. <laughs> they weren't built for that. It's only, it's built for really large companies. Like, like I think TD uses them. I mean, TD, the bank uses yeah. ADP. Well, right? it was also the thing we did. We had comprehensive outsourcing on the one hand with the parent and workforce now with the child companies. So it went from 99% on the bookkeeper to 99% on the outsourcing company. So, I mean, I ran both sides of this and, you know, I'm not a payroll practitioner. Mm -hmm. So in terms of wage point, uh, seriously, just listening to Rick earlier, um, I was like, yes, we're in the right place with the size of the company. So I really am grateful. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's a constant struggle because like, you know, investors and stuff, they're always like, go up market, see how you can get so much more dollars per revenue or per, per customer. But we are like, no, we're not built for that. Because every time we have to make a decision for someone larger, we have to sacrifice something for someone smaller. And we're not willing to do that. So that's so why it, a lot of what we do is decide what not to put in the software, because everything that we put in is a distraction from something else. So Sorry, Jonathan has a question here, but um... actually, I've got a bunch of questions from the audience as well. So if we can hold on to yours for a second, Jonathan. Um, so Afsana is asking that she's always concerned about safety and security of uh, her client's data. 
how do you make sure that your data doesn't get exposed to whom it shouldn't be? You know what? This stuff keeps me up at night. If as, <laughs> as happy as I look normally, this stuff makes me want to cry. Um, we do all kinds of things like the data is encrypted. Uh, so even if someone got it, they couldn't see anything. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, we also have, I, I can't tell you all the details, of course, but we have um, one of like, we have backup from an external team that actually does monitoring. Um, just so you understand, we get 30,000 hits a day trying to access the system. So it's not like, you know, we've had to really up this, this game. Uh, a good way of thinking about it is like, we've had Intuit um, do a full analysis on our, on our thing. Our CTO is borderline paranoid. Um, so yeah, he, his, his whole thing is trust no one. Uh, but we also do things like um, we do internal. Uh, so inside the company, we run uh, tests to see if anyone crack, uh, picks, uh, sorry, clicks on a phishing link. Um, so we have literally, and, and guys, let me be clear here. Everything I'm saying to you, we're still a very professionally run startup. It's not at all, um, it's not at all fly by the seat of your pants. We have processes in place for a lot of things like security, because we know if there's one thing that can tank our entire business, it's that. Yeah. So we throw all kinds of resources at it. Can I say it for sure in my life that no way, never anyone's ever going to get access to anything? I cannot, because that's not the age that we live in. But can we do everything that we possibly can to safeguard us, including hiring ninjas? So we actually have Navy SEAL um, type people that we contract with to protect us as well. So there's many things that we do including protecting the, uh, ourselves from any employee problems uh, or employee mishaps to external, you know, pingings from Russia and China and all that other stuff. We do everything that we can possibly do. So, well, and, and if you take a step back, you know, before running something on WagePoint, you would run your client's payroll on your computer on QuickBooks desktop or Sage software, or, you know, you're typing the information into a browser on the CRA website. Well, your computer is probably, or my, my computer is probably easier to hack than your system. So um, if we put it in perspective, um, yeah. absolutely, this is your business model. You're absolutely gonna be way further down that scale than we ever will be. Yeah, no, we invest a lot of money and time in this problem because it is the number one risk that we face. So we would never, I mean, we'd never willfully or willingly let anyone touch any bit of that information. So we'll do whatever it takes to protect everyone. Perfect. Okay, next question from Bianca. Do you use skill or app or software quizzes to test your employees? We should do all of those things, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if you're hiring for culture, are you doing it maybe not in the hiring process, but in the first 90 days? Uh, no, because that's the job. That's, that's the 90 days. So it's on the job that we like, that's why we pay so much attention to how well someone's answering a question or, or how that's when we get a sense of their knowledge. People pass tests all the time. Right. And um, at the end of the day, someone either has payroll knowledge or they don't. Right. So we, we can test that fairly quickly once they're in the business and, and just see, so you see, because of the three month probation thing, we've had to become very good at training people up so that they can prove to us very quickly whether or not they're good or not, um, and they can actually do their job. So that part of it, training them is, is more, like we're investing in that training in order to get the result that we want and with or, or not and move on from that person. So the one thing I will say is if you're willing to fail at your hire, you will do a lot better job than if you're trying to make the perfect hire every time. Um, and, and that, because it gives you freedom, right? It gives you freedom to like make mistakes. Um, so just, just keep that in mind, like, you know, in terms of how you think about hiring. Very, okay. A very interesting perspective of looking at it. Cause I know for most companies, and I'm going to say us included, you go through and you're looking for that perfect person because you don't want to go through the training and invest in the training and then have to let them go and start all over again. Um, so it's a different perspective that yeah, but but you shorten the training. You do do the you do like a different type of training, right? So instead of training the entire job, you train them for parts of the job that they can. You think they can demonstrate quickly after they start, um, okay. and that's kind of how you you just change the way that you do that piece 
and then that's how you find the like i mean at least this is what has worked for us so yeah because if you invest too much and like you start to doubt yourself right like and you're spending so much time looking for the right person when you can just begin so that's the difference okay and um one last question um and you've touched on this a little bit already how do you assess the progress during the probationary period like it's we check in like, you know, every, so, so there's always someone that is sort of looking with or with that person, right? So let's say in our CS team, we have Nancy, which you guys may have all talked to at some point, Nancy Willman. Um, she would be the one reading his tickets or her tickets, reading, uh, you know, trying to see how many times he's asking the same question, because that's another really big indicator that someone's not listening, right? Um, so they're checking to see that, is this person actually getting with the program? Is it starting to happen, you know? or are they really far away from where we need them to be within like month three? We don't usually let go of someone until we're in month three, because we want to give them a chance. Um, but there's always someone paired with that person to be to be training them like a buddy or, or in Nancy's case, a manager to, to take a look at it. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So those are all the questions. Jonathan, you had a question as well. We've got about five minutes left. So um, lots of great information here. My my head is spinning. I don't know about the rest of you, but um, go ahead, Jonathan, if you have another question. You're muted. He's on mute. No, I did, it wasn't really so much a question. It just, it, <laughs> it, cracks, it cracks me up that ADP stands for automatic data processing and they can't even just even send an email automatically. <laughs> like I, yeah, I asked them to try and set up, just send an email to Receipt Bank and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. They can't do it. But you know what? They've been around for 70, 80 years, right? I yeah. mean, it's a totally it's probably different. Probably like driving the Titanic, right? Yeah, really I, change I, it. I empathize. Like I can imagine how hard it is. Um, I, yeah. I don't think Rick empathizes as much because he's had to live in the sales culture there. Um, <laughs> just to give you a difference in perspective, their sales culture is like typical sales culture, which is highly uh, competitive, right? It's doggy dog. Some line must die, whatever it is. I don't know what those, those phrases are. But in ours, it's very collaborative. It's like everyone together. How do we like, you know, sort of like a, a football team where like moving yards together, um, like everyone's going forward. And one of the hardest roles to hire is salespeople who don't, who want collaboration and not competition. So, you know, it, it just, these are all really interesting, you know, these are all interesting problems, but yeah, I take your point. I mean, you know, they're 2019, send an email. Yeah. <laughs> so that means hey. that your reward system, though, is different than the typical culture because you're basing it on the collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Even that's for what us, makes like, dog eat dog is that, you know, I got to get the most points because then I get the biggest bonus. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But but we have a totally like everyone wins together, basically, in sales, which is a very unusual culture for sales, right? Because it's never collaborative. But the idea is to look after each other because it, or what really matters in the end? Does it matter that they make money or does it matter that the customer gets what they need? And that's how to, that's, that's it, even these guys, they should do well, but they shouldn't do it at the expense of the customer. And I can tell you that Rick can tell you some stories. I mean, not to belabor, not to hate on ADP, but Rick can tell you some stories that would shock you guys um, about that type of culture. Uh, so I did not want to put the focus on competing with the customer. I wanted to, to put the focus on collaborating with a customer. That's why it's like that. And even in our in our CS team, for example, we don't give bonuses. Um, like we give a bonus somewhere around Christmas time for as a Christmas gift. And then we give a bonus at, at the end of year end, depending on how well your end went for the customer. Because the year end is such a, it's like the apocalypse over here, you know, like it's, <laughs> so if you guys, if we, if we ever sound a little nuts, it's, it's because your end is, is making us all a little bit crazy. T4 season, T5 season. T4 yeah. season. Yeah. It's yeah. the, it's the best. <laughs> well, so. and it's one of the things that we love that we now don't have to worry about it. It's you guys that are <laughs> worrying about it. So yeah, it's absolutely. taken a lot of stress off of my team. We'll carry it for you guys. That's our we, job. And we appreciate it. We really do. Okay. So we're just coming up to nine o'clock. Any last questions before we um, we end off? Uh, I just have a comment. We're moving. We've moved our entire clients over to WagePoint piece by piece by piece. And this week, we are moving our very last QuickBooks desktop client over to WagePoint. So we're super excited. Me and my, we're like, we got to do it before, so we don't have to do manual T fours. Like, <laughs> we're like, oh, you know what, Suzanne? Right. I love hearing that. 
yeah. the best. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to all of you. I I know that I know that this stuff means like I mean you are in front of customers and I know how hard it is when things don't go right and you know we feel you guys like we are no different from you guys. We're just solving a different problem and you guys are solving a different problem, but we're in it together and we absolutely believe that. Well, I'm going to say that, uh, Shrad, you and Lena are two of my favorite people anywhere. I don't just mean in the community. You're, you're awesome. And you, you live your brand and you, and you build wage point around the way you live your lives. Yeah. Which is you, you give a crap about people and it shows. I mean, obviously, wage point's got this amazing culture. But when you get to know you as you and Lena as people, you realize that wage point really is you. And hearing you talk yeah. about it tonight um again is is awesome and i think it's it's been inspirational so thanks buddy and i wish i was going to see you in toronto but i'll take it out on lena okay. I, I yes. do that and do and, just and that. very yeah. well very well said brad um Thank you. it certainly is um so linda you have a quick question we're at nine o'clock and we like yeah. to try and end <laughs> at nine o'clock i just wanted to say shrad have you ever done any articles about your culture and how this should be something that other businesses should follow and give them those ideas because I think you really should do an article. <laughs> I will take that under consideration. I have had, I'm looking for people all the time. So I, I, I mean, the sense that I've, I, I have had no time to talk about this stuff. So when uh, Juliet in, invited me, I said, you know what, this is a good time to start doing some of that stuff. So I appreciate that though, Linda, I will definitely, when I find the next five minutes of time, <laughs> I will definitely do that. Well, we can just get Michelle to watch this video and she can just whip just something it up for your team. Yeah. yeah, she's pretty great. Yeah, yeah and thanks is. to her too, even though I don't know if she's here, but yeah. But but she can watch it later because it's on Facebook Live and it's on our YouTube channel. So it's gonna be out there. Um, so thank you all and thank you, Shrad. We, we really appreciate you sharing your insight, Rick, for giving us the other perspective as well. Um, I know that personally, my head is spinning. I've got lots of ideas. Um, so my team, probably when you guys watch this, we're going to get really excited at our next uh, our next team meeting and have some great discussions. But I did want, want to thank you. Um, I'm sure I'm speaking for Steve and myself. Steve's been really quiet tonight, which is really unusual. Um, Smiling big, though. He's having a good time <laughs> over there. Um, but uh, thanks again for joining us for um, this edition of Wine. Yeah, Business. no problem. So now I can start officially drinking from the bottle, right? You can, absolutely. <laughs> oh my you could have all along there, buddy. <laughs> Good <laughs> boy. Have a fabulous. That. Take care, everyone. That was and great, Shrad. Everyone, yeah. we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Where?